galera, bora dar uma olhada aí como que os ingleses, né, a SPN da Inglaterra reagiu ao Vinícius Júnior contra o Manchester City pela Champions League. Marcou um golaço o Vinícius Júnior, jogando muito bem. É, esperavam muito do Haaland, o Haaland não jogou tão bem assim, foi bem marcado o Haaland. Mas o Vinícius Júnior jogou mais uma vez muito bem, né. Carregando o Real Madrid, ficou o jogo 1x1, né. O De Bruyne fez um golaço também no final. Quer final não, né, meio... Segundo tempo lá fez um golaço. E agora vai ter o jogo da volta. Comenta aí o que vocês acham já o placar da volta. Quem se classifica. E bora dar uma olhada aí nos elogios dos ingleses. Bora pro vídeo aí rapaziada. A handful. Oggy, isn't he? Haaland. And Alex is just talking about having 22 touches of the ball. That's it. We've seen him have 22 touches in the Premier League game. And probably score a hat-trick. That's what he does. He might have been pretty quiet in this one. But it's going to be pretty tough to keep him quiet at the Etihad next week, is it not? Yeah, I mean, the one thing I've seen about Haaland this season, there have been a couple of times when he's found it difficult against teams that have really, really marked him closely. I think the FA Cup tie against Arsenal was one. And I think Everton at the Etihad, he, he struggled when James Tarkovsky and Conor Cody were tight to him. So if Real have found the, the way to handle Haaland by getting very tight to him, then all that does is free up more space for everybody else. You know, It frees up more space for De Bruyne, it frees up more space for for Jack Grealish or people like Riyad Mahrez if they commit to the team next week. So even when he's being occupied by two defenders, he's helping his team, Harlan. So that's what the difference is, I think, this season. It, it just gives him a different dimension and it makes Real more fearful of what City have got. And that, he, did, he had a couple of chances to start Harlan. He had, a, he had a, one that was saved well by Courtois, but, you know, he's always a threat, isn't he? He's just a very dangerous player, I think. You know that he's going to get a chance at the Etihad. The yeah. City play so breathtaking at the Etihad. So I think it's going to be very tough to keep him quiet next week. Alex, the focal point at the same end of the pitch for Real Madrid, Karim Benzema, again, pretty quiet. But both of these two teams have got such talented supporting cast. Vinny Jr. was the one that got the goal this time. If it's not him, it was Rodrigo who's been scoring of late. Does that suggest to you that we might get a more open game with more goals in the second leg in eight days' time? I think Benzema is still the main man for, for Madrid, but what we are definitely seeing this season is Vinicius Jr. increasingly becoming kind of the match winner and, and the difference maker. And it's not all about Benzema anymore. Rodrigo as well is maybe a little bit underrated and doesn't get as many headlines as either of those two, but he's been exceptional this season. Saw him score twice in the Copa del Rey final of the weekend. And Vinicius, I think, is just delivering consistently in, in big games now. Um, the goal from him tonight was kind of atypical for, for him. He tends to score goals where he's kind of after a you know a mazy run or a dribble in one on one or cutting in from the left hand side. This was a bit a bit different. It was more central. It was more about power, um, and he maybe caught Edison a little bit by by surprise. But I think Madrid's front three certainly is where the danger lies for uh, for them, and it, it's about all three of them. Like I say, it's not just about. Benzema anymore, it's about Vinicius and absolutely about Rodrigo as well. And the only thing when those three start is that they haven't always got as much attacking threat off the bench. Because what we saw last season was Rodrigo coming off the bench mm -hmm. to score goals like he did against City. But when he starts, of course, you don't have that. Chaka, your power rankings have gone down in infamy. Uh, I don't know what infamy that is and how they'll be remembered. But if we look at strikers and the power rankings, Haaland's up there, Mbappe is up there, Benzema's up there. Does Vinny Jr. feature there or thereabouts? Is he in the conversation? Without question. Uh, I think Vinicius Jr. continues to establish himself as, as one, of, one of the world's greats. Um, and, and, and for good reason. I, I still think that Vinicius Jr. Is, is learning his trade, learning to cope with being a, the talent that he is. Uh, I've, I've spoken about that, how teams, particularly in, in La Liga, target him and, and try to wind him up and get him off his game. That's an aspect that that he can improve on but I, I can't think of much else for him to improve on when you see when you see him in, in full flow as as he was today when you see him at, at his best i think it's undeniable that when we talk about match winners in world football vinicius jr is in the first line well thank you very much for watching espn Tá aí então, né, rapaziada? Pessoal aí da SPN, da Inglaterra falando, né, elogiando bastante o Vinícius Júnior. Citaram o Rodrigo também, né, que fez dois gols na final da Copa do Rei aí no último sábado, eu acho, se eu não tô enganado. E, cara, o jogo 1x1, um um, mano, um jogão bonito, dois golaços do Vini e do De Bruyne. O Haaland é, esperava mais dele, do Benzema também, né. Mas comentei o que vocês acharam, rapaziada, essa nova geração que tá surgindo aí, né, pra substituir o Messi e o Cristiano Ronaldo, óbvio que... 
É difícil chegar no mesmo nível dele, né? Mas tem bons jogadores novos chegando. Tem o Bellingham, tem o Mbappé, tem o Vinícius Júnior, Rodrigo. Tem muito um jogador novo aí que pode ser o futuro aí do futebol, beleza? Então comenta se achou, deixa o seu like, se inscreva no canal. Tamo junto, valeu e nós galera, até o próximo vídeo.